السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وأهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إنما المؤمنون الذين إذا ذكر الله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون صدق الله العلي العظيم Every human being in this life suffers from some sort of anxiety confusion fear sometimes mental disorder, sometimes depression, sometimes uncertainty. All are human beings. It's a type of sickness. Same way you have physical sickness, you can have mental sickness too, mental disease. It happens. No one is immune. God says to Prophet Muhammad, وَلَعَلَّكَ ضَائِقٌ بِهِ صَدْرُكَ وَضَائِقٌ بِهِ صَدْرُكَ Sometimes you experience, because of what they say against you, because of their rejection, because of verifying you, the Meccans, when they verify you, تَارِكٌ بَعْضَ مَا يُحَا إِلَيْكَ Maybe you come to some thoughts that you would not deliver the message to them. Tarikun, leaving. Ba'dama yuha ilayk. Some of what we have revealed for you. Because they're going to reject you. Wadaikun bihi sadruk. And your chest, your breast is being straightened and tightened. In another verse. وَلَقَدْ نَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ يَضِيقُ صَدْرُكَ بِمَا يَقُولُونَ We know, Prophet Muhammad, we know that sometimes you have tightness in your chest. Why tight, tightness in your chest? Because he has high cholesterol? Why? Because of the suffering. Because of the mental torment, the mental torture. Because of the accusations, because of the attacks, because of the plottings against him. Because he kept telling them and inviting them to the right path and they kept and insisting on rejecting him and belying him and launching war against him. And they would gather their sufaha, the foolish people in their community in Mecca. And it was full of foolish people. They gathered them with some kids and then they give them incentives and they encourage them to run after the Prophet and attack him and they throw stones at him. And the Prophet is a human being. The Prophet is not an angel. I'm a human being just like you. You ha'ilay with the difference that I receive Revelation from God. So every person, my friends, in this life suffers at some point of his or her life from anxiety, fear, uncertainty, sometimes loneliness. When you are the only worshiper in your family, when you are the only person who loves God and who fears God and who reveres God and who obeys God in your family, in your community, sometimes in your society, and people do not listen, then you feel lonely. Definitely you feel lonely. Prophet Muhammad himself, he felt, he felt lonely. Imam Ali himself felt lonely. You know Imam Ali while he was a caliph. And a caliph must be very busy with lots of commitments. 
from early morning till midnight. He didn't rest. He was workaholic. He was working and working and serving and defending, defending his community, reaching out to people. But again, he felt lonely. We all go through that. Sometimes, sometimes it's visible. We see it, we notice it, and sometimes you don't notice it. It's hidden. It's inside. Some people, they express themselves, they express their boredom, they express their anxiety, their unhappiness, their anger, their frustration. They speak about it, they share it. Others may not do that, but it doesn't mean they don't have fear or anxiety. So everyone needs emotional support. This is why God created the family. The best emotional support, psychological support, and I would say moral and spiritual support too is your family, your parents, your mother, your father, your spouse, your son, your daughter, your sibling, your brother, your sister, sometimes your friend, your confidant. They provide you with emotional support and you must seek support. You must go to them. Don't hesitate. Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. Because there is some stigma attached. But when you need help, you must go to those people. If those people, they, they have wisdom, they have good standing and good character and some experience in this life, they can provide you with some experience, then go to them. Don't hesitate. Go to those people and ask for help. This is why God considers marriage to be a safe haven. وَمِنْ آيَاتِهِ أَنْ خَلَقَ لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَزْوَاجًا لِتَسْكُنُوا لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا You find second, shelter, lodging, refuge, emotional refuge, psychological refuge. لِتَسْكُنُوا إِلَيْهَا and then he engenders among your hearts وَجَعَلَ بَيْنَكُمْ مَوَدَّةً Compassion and mercy وَرَحْمَةً The institution of marriage. I call it always the institution of marriage. It is an institution. It has foundations. It has rules and regulations. It has many benefits. We need emotional support. Each and every person in this life needs emotional support in his or her journey. This is why God created men for women and women for men. They integrate each other. They complement each other. They support each other. They need each other. Not just physical need, emotional need, spiritual need, mental need. They are considered medicine and remedy for each other. This is how the marriage is supposed to be. Now, if it is not like that, this is not God's problem. This is not the Quran's problem. This is our own problem. Otherwise, God intended for marriage to be means of healing and recovery and remedy and empowerment. God says about men and women in marriage, husbands and wives, you both provide protection and garment and covering and shelter and support for each other and attraction for each other. Now, if that does not happen, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry for some people who don't find that in their marriages. This is why I always say, I've been saying this for many decades and I will keep saying this. The best gift, of course, after monotheism and, and faith in God and Ahlul Bayt, the best gift God provides you is a good partner, good spouse, an understanding spouse, a caring spouse, a responsible spouse. 
conscientious spouse, a selfless spouse. If you have this, you have to give thanks to God every single day, many times, many times. Give thanks to God for providing you with such beautiful spouse. But then, beside family, my friends, family is not enough. As means for emotional stability, family is not enough. We need something else too. What do we need? We need to tighten and strengthen our relationship with God. We need to go back to God. Believe me, if you have the strongest family, the happiest family, the largest family, the healthiest family, but you have no connection with God, still the complete happiness, the real happiness is not achieved. Maybe you achieve artificial happiness. You go to parties, weddings, birthdays, gatherings, dinners with your, with your family, with your friends, with your extended family members. But at the end of the day, when you come back home, still there is something missing. Because in your heart, there is a gap. There is a void. There is an area that cannot be filled with money, with fame, being a celebrity, being rich, having family, having good husband, good wife, many kids. No, it cannot be filled. It can be filled only with one thing, and that is the presence of God in your heart. The presence, the presence of God. I live in Los Angeles. You know how many celebrities we have? I think LA, maybe after New York, or maybe it rivals with New York, in the number of famous people and celebrities who live in that city. It is still, when you go to the Los Angeles Superior Court, go and check it out. Do you know how many cases of divorce being filed every single day? Not every week or every month, every single day. Mostly, mostly for divorce. Mostly by rich and famous people. By influential people in the society. They have enough money for the rest of their life. They have the biggest mansions. They have the fanciest cars. They have the most beautiful jewelry and furniture and yachts, private yachts, private jets, whatever. But when the heart is not connected with God, you would not enjoy the real stability. Neither the real happiness and joy. There will be always some void in your heart some emptiness in your heart. You know, when people convert to Islam, and they do convert in this country, and I speak with them, being males or females, I ask them about the reason. Why did you come here? Why do you want to convert to Islam? Most of them, maybe not all, but most of them stress that there is a void in my heart. I was trying to search for a source of stability, source of confidence, source of strength. And I studied this religion and that religion and this school and that school. And I did everything at the end of the day. When I read the Quran, I reflected upon the verses of the Quran in English translation or other translations. I found what I was missing in the Quran. In this religion, I found peace in Islam. This is what they say. Because there was void in their hearts. And that void is only filled with connection with God. With establishing a good relationship with God. And this is what he says. God says in the Quran, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Those who believe, وَتَطْمَئِنُّ قُلُوبُهُمْ بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ 
and their hearts find peace with the remembrance of God, with a connection with God. Ala bidhikrillahi tatma'innu al-qulub. Are not hearts at peace in the remembrance of God? Definitely yes. Only when they have God in their hearts. Only when they establish good relationship with God. This is why one of the most important and fundamental pillars of faith is trust in God. But not just saying it without doing it. See, my friends, let me show you something. This is a single American dollar bill, okay? Here at the back it says, in God we trust. In God we trust. On the dollar bill. We say these things every day. I trust God. But when it comes to practicing that, we don't do it. We don't do it. We trust ourselves. We trust our money. We trust our currency. We trust our health. We trust our doctor, our attorney, the mayor, the chief of police. We trust our family members. But we don't trust God. We put our trust in other things. I wish we can trust God always. We may trust our families and our wealth and our health, but the final trust has to be put only in God. Because all these families and wealth and health may go any moment, may disappear any moment. And we've seen people who are very healthy, very powerful, very strong, they disappeared. They fell down. In a moment of joy and happiness, they fell down. They died. We saw people who were very wealthy, they lost their wealth. How many people we lost during the pandemic for the last two and a half years? How many? Countless. Many of them were rich. Many of them were very healthy. Many of them were powerful, influential, famous. But that did not prevent death from reaching to them. Put your trust in God. God is the only one who does not fail you. God is the only one who does not disappoint you. Trust in God. Let me give you an example, my friends. I have a friend of mine who says, he travels a lot. And he says, when I go to a country where I know no one, I have to do things by myself, the bookings, the airport, the transportation, the hotel, the food. I get worried a little bit. But when I have someone, a friend that I know, and the friend tells me I'm coming to the airport to pick you up, I'm taking you, driving you to the hotel, I'm driving you to places, tourist attraction places, I'm taking you to the restaurant. Okay, no worries about anything. He says, I feel I'm at peace. I have no worries. I travel with excitement because I know I have someone to depend upon. I have someone who I can trust. He's there for me. As soon as I disembark from the airplane, I find him at the airport. Then I worry about nothing. He takes care of me, full care of me. I trust him. This is why I have peace of mind. Now take this analogy, this story, and apply it to God. God is the best friend. Maybe that friend who promised you to come, the human friend who promised you to come to the airport, maybe he would fail you. Maybe he would call you and says, listen, I have an emergency. Something comes up and I can't make it to the airport, sorry. And it happens. But when it comes to God and you put your trust in God, God would not let tell you, listen, I have no time for you. I'm too busy today. I cannot make it. I'm tired today. I have to take my mother to the hospital today. I have to go to and run the errands today. He doesn't do that. He doesn't say that. The problem, we don't put our trust in God. We don't put our full trust in God. Now, the trust does not mean that you do nothing 
nothing at all and you become lazy and a freeloader and say, oh God, now I trust you, you take care of my affairs from A to Z. No. Trust means, tawakkul means two things. One is the human element. The second, the divine element. The human element, the human element, I have to do my homework. I have to study for the exam if I'm a student. I have to go to work and I have to be a hard worker if I'm, if I'm a businessman, if I am working, okay? If I am sick, I have to go to the doctor and the hospital and I have to follow the doctor's instructions. Then I ask God for help. But if I don't go to the hospital and say, God, I'm sick, you take care of me. I don't like doctors, I don't like hospitals, I don't like medicine, you take care of me. God is not going to do that. If you are a businessman and you don't go to your office, you don't work, you stay at home and then ask God for sustenance, for provision, for risk, God is not going to listen. If you are a student, you don't do your homework, you don't study for the exam, for the finals, and then you just ask God, oh God, today I have the finals, I want you to help me, I want you to get A+. plus." That does not happen, my friend. God does not listen. Don't waste your time. God says, you take care of the first part. I take care of the second part. This is the meaning of tawakkul. And if you put your trust in God, God has a beautiful promise. وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ Whoever puts his trust in God, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهْوَ حَسْبُهُ If you do your share, if you are not lazy, if you are a hardworking person, if you go to your school and your office, if you go to your doctor, if you try to help yourself, if you are not indifferent, but you are serious about helping yourself, if you are searching for the good partner, the good spouse, the good wife, the good husband, you yourself, you are searching actively, and then you ask God for guidance, then God says, فَهْوَ حَسْبُهُ God is going to suffice you. God is not going to fail you. God is going to listen to your prayers. So for things to happen, we need two things. We need human actions, human intervention, human work, your work, be serious. Whatever you want to do, you have to help yourself out. You can't just sit at home and expect God to be very kind, very easygoing, and He listens to you 24-7. He says, you do the first part, and the second one, the dua, pray. Ask God. Don't give up on God. If you do your share, then immediately ask God to do His own share. Say to God, God, I'm a student and I want to pass the exam, and I'm studying. Look at me, I'm studying. I'm not wasting my time. I'm working hard. I'm preparing myself for the exam. So I did my share. Now I want you to do your own share. If you are a worker, if you are looking for risk, sustenance, provision, tell God, God, I left my home early in the morning. I'm searching for work. I'm serious about work. I'm not wasting my time. I am being on time, punctual. I don't hurt my co-workers. I listen to my boss. I fulfill my duty. Now I want you to do your own share. In this case, God is not going to let you down. God says, وَمَنْ يَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ فَهْوَ حَسْبُهُ God is going to suffice him. فَهْوَ حَسْبُهُ إِنَّ اللَّهَ بَالِغُ أَمْرِهِ قَدْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ لِكُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدْرًا God had made for everything a measurement. If it is meant for you to happen, He will do it. If that thing is good for you and your future and your faith and your safety and your journey in this life, He will do it for you. Put your trust in God. Put your trust in God. God comes to your aid at the most critical moment. Sometimes God puts our petitions on hold. We keep telling him, oh God, I need this to happen. Doesn't happen the first day, 
neither the first week, nor the first month, nor the first year. It takes some time. Sometimes it takes forever. But at the end, God will bring you the victory. I recall the story of a person. His boat capsized in the sea. And he was swimming long distance until he reached an island. An empty island. No one was there. No one was there to help him. So he lived in that island. And he would survive on the leaves of the trees. And he built a small hut for himself to protect himself. Atop a tree, somewhere high to protect himself and to sleep. One day there was thunder and storm. And the lightning came and destroyed his hut. So he was so upset. He said, God, I'm trying to survive. No one is here to help me. And I'm surviving on leaves. On the grass. I'm eating grass just to survive, not to die. And I built this small hut for myself. And now it's being destroyed by lightning. So what do you want me to do? At that moment... When there was a fire in the tree, another ship was passing by and they saw a fire and they realized that this is an SOS call. This is a distress call. Someone is calling for help. So they changed their direction. They came to the island and they saved that man. Sometimes, my friends, the aid comes at the last minute, but don't give up. Put your trust in God. God is hearing, God is listening, God is seeing, God is knowing, and God is responding. Assalamu alaikum ya Aba Abdullah. Imam Hussein, on the most difficult moment in Karbala, what did he say? Allahumma anta thiqati fi kulli karb wa anta rajai fi kulli shidda. O oh Allah, you are my thiqa, you are my trust. In every affliction, in every affliction, you are my trust. Nothing else is my trust except you. Anta thiqati fi kulli karb. Wa anta rajai. And you are my only hope fi kulli shidda. At every distress. So I beseech you. You are seeing what is happening to me. Bring us victory. And that victory was moral victory. Not military victory. But a moral victory. And this is what you see today. After 1400 years. Thousands. Millions of people are chanting, Ya Hussein, Labbayka Ya Hussein. This is the moral victory. Assalamu alaikum Ya Aba Abdullah, wa ala al arwah alati halat bi finaika wa anakat bi rahlik. Alaikum minni jami' an salamu Allahi abadan ma baqit, wa baqiya al laylu wa nahar, wa la ja'alahu Allahu akhir al ahdi minni li ziyaratikum. Assalamu ala al Hussein, wa ala al ibn al Hussein, wa ala awlad al Hussein. وعلى أصحاب الحسين جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله